Mercedes winners trophy we look forward to the Toyota MR2 championship the cars for which are on their warming up lap now another good low cost series this the race is over 18 minutes the man on pole position is George Robinson Many of the drivers in this, in fact, are relative newcomers to motor racing. Nobody has any great background of many, many years in the sport. It's just a series where you can buy a donor car for relatively little money, go racing. Uh, the man that runs the championship and uh, looks after many of the cars through his rogue motorsport business is Patrick Mortel. He drives car number 76 and is going to be another driver to watch on the outside of the fourth row of the grid. So George Robinson and Ben Rowe, the two at the front of the grid, as Jim Davis here, complete with the onboard camera, slots into place on the grid. Got cars in two classes. Cars in two classes. You've got the 2 litre 1200 kilo, 174 brake horsepower cars in class B, 180, sorry, 138, I should say, brake horsepower, 1.8 litre cars in class C as the race gets underway now. And everybody accelerates off down towards Folly with George Robinson making the best start and Ben Rowe trying to go with him, but he's not that quick out of the blocks and he's in danger of losing a place to Matthew Palmer, who comes up alongside him on the run, then through Folly for the first time. And now they go towards Quarry Corner. So a good getaway that by George Robinson on a road that once again is drying out. They turn their way into quarry, and are they all going to survive? They try to go three wide there. Matthew Palmer's blue car is on the outside line. Good effort and a brave effort, and I think it's going to pay dividends. Yeah, very, very good move there. And for the guys a little bit further back that are jostling for position, hence our camera car of um, Jim Davis there, it's very, very easy for them to go offline. The tyres cool down, they get wet and greasy, and then they have a bit of a moment and slide and then lose out on the pace on the exit of the S's chicane there as they go for a flat-out run down to Hammer Hill. 35, you can see there, Jim Davis on the outside. Novice driver, novice cross on the back. So, down towards the tower they come for the first time. The black car of George Robinson in the lead. And Ben Rowe has managed to hang on to second spot. And the big gap has opened up between the top three and the rest of them as they file their way through for the first time. 44, Luke Aston goes through. A man who works for the Force India Formula One team. Works in their wind tunnel department. Former kart racer, in fact, Luke. So, as he comes there now, up through the... Chicane at Bobby's, he's under pressure, trying to attack, but he's under pressure from no lesser driver than Patrick Mortel, the man behind this series, who is in one of the company's hire cars, just out for a bit of fun, and he goes around the outside, so a brave effort that, coming down towards camp corner, pa Patrick Mortel picks up a place, doesn't he, under braking for the final right-hander on the lap, as the leaders are absolutely nose to tail, two tenths between them, that's all. Yeah, so this guy in second place just coming out of the tow, coming up over Avon Rise. You can both see the brake lights coming on, onto the wet, slippery surface. Is he going to do it? Yes, he's done it around the outside, then on the inside then of um, Quarry Corner. So great move there and well executed, Whoa. but ends in tears on the exit. <laughs> so maybe not well executed. So um, lost out there from the lead down to third place, but they've got enough buffer there for them to squabble and sort it out again. A for effort, E for execution, I think there, yes, because it was a good idea, but it didn't quite pay off. And of course, as you made the point earlier, get on that wet, very, very slippy grass, you're gonna be a passenger. So 21, briefly the leader, now down to third, Ben Rowe, makes his way through Hammerdown, heading towards Tower this time around. This is lap number two, and he needs to get his head together again, try and bring down that gap, he's lost some time, turns his way through the right-hander. But these three, as Charlie correctly says, well clear of everybody else, so they've got their own private battle going on. The best of the rest is the Class C leader for the 1.8-litre cars, and that is Stuart Nichols, whose dad is also in the race, and Patrick Mortel is chasing on behind him. In fact, Patrick Mortel there, look, coming out of Bobby's, working his way away from the next train of cars. That means he's now managed to pull clear of Luke Austin. So, we've got the cars accelerating once more, side by side now, down towards camp. This is for the race lead. Matthew Palmer it is, who tries to go through, does he round the outside as they come out of camp and over the line up towards Folly. Can't go around the outside there, and in fact, he leaves the door wide open and charging back at him is Ben Rowe. What was all that about? All of a sudden, he seemed to either miss a gear or lose pace, but from challenging for the lead, now he just drops to third. Yeah, that seems to be a missed gear because he was actually threatening to um, to dice for the lead there, so definitely a missed gear there and a massive disadvantage along that fast section of the Castle Coombe circuit. You can start to see a dry line definitely appearing, um, so those guys doing the late lunges or overtaking offline are going to have to struggle on that slippery surface. Well, that all helps Ben Rowe, doesn't it? He gets back up one place, and he's actually not that far away now from the race leader, George Robinson. He's going to try and make up 11 tenths of a second. Really frustrating, though, that for Matthew Palmer. He just done the best lap of the race, goes over the line, and seems to lose pace. Well, he's fought back, and now George Robinson in the lead of the race, trying to build a bit of a gap, but it's not easy. The road getting drier and therefore faster all the while. 
and these cars pretty much in standard trim. As I say, donor cars don't take you back a huge amount of money. It's a good low-cost series to go racing in. 32, you can see there. That's the car in the hands of Lloyd Clarkson, powering his way now down towards Bobbitt. Currently, he runs in ninth spot. Well, the cars in these conditions are 10 seconds a lap faster than they did in qualifying. The onboard camera car there of Jim Davis goes through, currently in 12th spot. The so old U-shape MR2 is all doing battle head-to-head -head in this series. So we now ride on board, going through Camp Corner, which is a very fast, brave corner with a new kerb on the right-hand side there, and then back to the leaders then as they go over Avon Rise into the tricky quarry corner. And you all, a bit of a twitch there from number 21, just trying to have a look up the inside to snatch the lead again. That's where he made the mistake on the previous lap. So uh, not, not one of his favourite corners today here at Coombe for um, this young man that's trying to take the lead again. Yeah, Ben Rowe, having had that big tank slapper a little earlier in the race, is still there on the tail of George Robinson, who may not have the pace to pull away, but he's not making any mistakes, is he? He's just driving his own lines, driving stoically up front and defending very, very strongly. And, of course, while he's keeping Ben Rowe at bay, so Matthew Palmer in the blue car is coming back at them. Now, if we start having a battle for second place, that's going to play right into the hands of the leader. Yeah, definitely. So these guys squabbling around um, and then going wide there for Palmer on the exit of um, Tower Corner through Bobby Chicane. And you can see there's a slight undulation of the circuit there. You can see the suspension of the cars working well. And these three definitely commanding this race and maybe just playing each other for, a, um, for, the, for the rest of the race. We've still got 12 minutes left and nobody's really making any really daring moves. But I think um, it's definitely between one of these three. Over the timing line, they come nose to tail for the race lead. And that is two tenths of a second as Ben Rowe once again tries to make a move. He goes to the outside line, almost runs out of road. He gets perilously close to the grass there. And he's heading up towards Quarry, his bogey corner. He's got all the pace at this part of the circuit. He hasn't got the lead, though. He slots back in behind, then goes to the inside line, scrabbles through. But is he going to run out wide? George Robinson knows exactly what's going to happen. He positions the car, ready to fight back coming out of the corner. They're absolutely side by side going up now towards the S's. Back on the inside comes Robinson. Yes, he retakes the lead. One up and one back for Van Rowe. So he led briefly. And George Robinson, who is taking a very, very sensible approach to this race, isn't he? He's letting everybody else make the mistakes and he's just there, ready to pick up the pieces. And he's not being ruffled by anything that's going on around him. He's back up front. Yeah, Robinson in the black car that's leading at the moment is driving a very solid race. He's making that MR2 very, very wide and looks very, very solid um, in that commanding lead position at the moment. Uh, we've got Rowe in second place, who's still squabbling around, desperately trying to be in the lead for more than just that fraction of a second that he took earlier, but just seems to be going in too deep into the Corey Bend that he's done his moves twice on now, and then gets a bad run on the exit, which then gives it back to Robinson to get the inside line for the S's after that. So let's see if this will continue throughout the race. But this will just give Palmer a chance to either conserve his tyres or just sit back and watch and think, come on then, boys, you take yourselves off and I'll, um, I'll clean up the win at the end. Thank you very much. Well, the good thing is we've had this great battle going on and people are making errors now and again, but we're not having any dirty driving. There's no contact that we've seen so far. Nobody barging their way through. So here comes Ben Rowe once again. Look, he's got all of that speed going up towards Quarry. Is he going to make another attempt on the inside? The gap is there. And he takes two wheels over the curb. And there it possibly is contact. And George Robinson comes off worse and off into the tyres he goes. The sooner do I say about good driving standards that we have the one exception to the rule. And Matthew Palmer goes up the inside. So he's going to take the lead now. And Ben Rowe is still second. But there was contact because you can see the little bit of damage on the left front corner of the red car. Well, George Robinson, I think he possibly left a bit of a gap. He tried to close that door. Whose corner was it? Well, it's a tough call, you know. We may be able to see a replay a little bit later on. But uh, here we go. So replay, perfect timing. So inside line, and he just cuts across. I think racing incident, really, to be honest with you. There was no real harm done there. It was just very, very close stuff. And as I mentioned, Palmer's now just cleaned up to take the lead. Literally, just as I said, that these guys are going to be fighting at it hammer and tongue. Now, can George Robinson recover and get back onto terms with the top two after all of that? And that's the next question with nine and a half minutes to go. We've got a new race leader then. It is Matthew Palmer down at Camp Corner. Six laps down here at Castle Coombe in the 750 Motor Club's Toyota MR2 Championship race. And it's Matthew Palmer leading by 0.9 of a second from the battered car of Ben Rowe. And then the man that led early on is now down in third spot. George Robinson on it to win it. 
say, the supporters of this category. And as the leaders go by, George Robinson has got a big job on his hands now to fight back. Right up with Jim Davis, up into eighth place now. Yeah, that was some really good onboard stuff there. Going up into fifth gear, flat out, as we now approach Avon Rise. So going up over to Avon Rise, really easy to get the back end out and aim it up on the left-hand side into the tie wall there at Quarry Corner. So um, some really good onboard stuff here. He's now on the inside now for the S's, and he's going to outbreak his... Carl is left to his overtaking, down into third gear, blipping the throttle on the way down to stop the rear wheels, locking up, and then... Off we go through down to um, Hammer Down, which is a flat out section. Really, really brave through here. He's just got ahead there. Look at the green and white car of Malcolm Edison, the chief instructor for the Lotus On Track Driving Club. And Jim Davis, therefore, now up into seventh spot. And he's running second in his class as well. He runs uh, in the 1.8 litre class for the 138 horsepower, 1000 kilo cars with the limited slip diffs. He's chasing after Stuart Nichols, who's going very well, but a bit further up the road. So Jim Davis may struggle to take a class win. Race leaders have just gone by, incidentally, with Ben Rowe lapping quicker than Matthew Palmer, the man that he's chasing. So the gap has come down ever so slightly as Jim Davis now accelerates towards camp. That's it. So following uh, Mr. Mortel, the actual championship organiser, Mr. MR2, as he's known in the paddock, through camp corner, a very brave corner, and gets a really good exit on the way there. So you see gear change very, very quickly, up into fifth gear, flat on the power, but Mortel is on the left-hand side, which is the inside now for the left-hand rise for um, Avon Rise, but we've got the inside line for Quarry Corner. It's great to see how the two classes of car pan out, isn't it? Class C, Jim Davis, ahead of Class B, Patrick Mortel. There's Malcolm Addison in another of the rogue motorsport prepared cars. Very high standard of presentation and preparation from Patrick Mortel's company. Seven more minutes of the race to go. George Robinson struggling now to get his lap times down to those of the leaders. Just incidentally to go back to what's happening up front. Jim Davis, as the race wears on, is getting stronger and stronger, isn't he? He's working his way up the overall order. Yeah, he's been, we've been getting some really good stuff from it on board as well and lots of um, good overtaking moves. And it just goes to show that these, these uh, Toyota engines are really, really revving hard and screaming through into the cockpit for the drivers to um, figure out what gear they need to be in for each corners. So there we go, we've got the leaders coming through camp corner, which is the last corner, new curbing on the right-hand side, as we mentioned earlier, to stop people cutting the corner and then making lap times too fast here at Castle Coombe. So a few changes have been made over the weekend by the, um, the track marshals and the, um, the organisers here. Smoke's exciting there, and we've got is that Patrick Mortel's car, I fear, that may have had a big drama, and he's trying to limp off the road out of harm's way. Couldn't get across into the pit. He can now if he goes over the grass. Yes, Patrick Mortel it is, who has had a big problem, and it was all of his, I fear, engine smoke, so he's limping down the pit lane, and Patrick Mortel looks like he's going to be out of the race. Now, there is the man that led early on, which is George Robinson, who is down in third place, and not now being able to bring down his lap time. So I think some of the impetus of his race has been taken out of him by that whack he had off the road in, into the tyres so having been looking very very strong early on got turned around of course off the road but may of course be a bit of damage that he sustained in that off might be corner waiting for an example after the bash he had into the tyre wall maybe the car is not quite as it was at the start of the race certainly it looks a bit broad around that front right corner doesn't it where we saw it go off into the tyres so George Robinson here thinking about points rather than uh, any better than that now he is currently second in his class in the championship Paul Hinson, the man that leads the class absent in fact today. And there's another one in grief there, look, and that's Mark Nichols, uh, sorry, Mick Nichols, I should say. His son leads the class, and Mick has had a spin at Quarry. Gets himself back onto the circuit, but even as the road continues to dry, more drivers getting themselves in trouble. Let's have a look, Charlie. Yeah, I enter speed way too fast, and then he's just gone, oh, I better slow it down even more, and I'll, which way do you want to go into the barriers? And he seems to have executed that quite well, but way too fast on the way in. Um, just seem to make no effort on the brakes, but no damage really done on the car, which has been uh, good. Talking about um, Robinson in third, I think there's definitely going to be have words with Rowan Robinson um, at the end of this race. And as we see there, Patrick Mortel, the Mr. MR2, very professional outfit he runs, having a bit of bad luck with that particular car. This lead gap's coming down again, isn't it? Ben Rowe determined to take the win. He led briefly when he got past George Robinson on one lap. He almost led after the contact, but then he was mugged again by Matthew Palmer. He's brought the gap down to a second, and he has not given up yet. Four and a half minutes are on the clock. He comes now down towards the right-hander of Tower, and he is still pushing on. Turns his way through the corner. He 
He's not close enough to think about a move yet, but we know he carries great speed from the start and finish line up towards Quarry. And Palmer has actually done the fastest lap of the race again. He's bettered his time of 1 minute 23.3, which is early on. It's now a 22.9, so gone a fair few tenths faster in the second half of the race. So his car is still coming alive and it's still cracking on. So um, a good setup for the um, for the Palmer car that's leading, number 87. So great setup from that one. Now this little battle is raging on. Luke Austin keeping at bay just as they come down towards Bobby's. Tim Heron, a pair of them tied together here as they accelerate their way down towards Camp Corner. And there is Jim Davis, who is on the tail now, coming out of Camp Corner of 88 Stuart Nichols. I said he was a long way back from the class lead, but he has done an amazing job. In fact, Jim Davis has just done the fastest lap of anybody in the race, and he goes storming round on the outside at a cheery wave, and he's now got the class lead. Great effort this, isn't it? Well, I don't know, because I think there's still a car on our right-hand side there. No, he has actually done it. So up into fifth gear, a little cheeky wave of his, um, of his teammate there. And, um, and then goes wide right on the exit, gets up really good. And that was the, it was, the, it was the cocky wave that gave it away. You never wave to your opponents when you're passing them. You don't go cheers for the move, because then it just makes you look too flash, and then you go off. So he's got to do all that work again, but great on-board footage again, and great driving from Davis in the number 35 MR2. See whether there's a cheery wave if he gets by a second time. Novice driver, remember Jim Davis, so you may argue that was a novice mistake. He did the hard work to get by, just ran a little bit wide going through quarry. But he's got the time left in the race, I think, to have another go here. He's certainly got the pace to catch back up. He's almost there now, look. And they come down towards Bobby's. Now, this is what he did. He'd gone through. Ooh, it all gets very leery, doesn't it, going through quarry. Lots of arm twirling, and he managed to keep it in the right direction. Uh, to be fair to Jim Davis, it would have been very easy to have uh, kept his foot in, lose traction altogether, and lose the car there. And then he would have gone across. Uh, the guy that he's just overtaken, that could have been quite a nasty incident. Yeah. So, great onboard footage again. Great opposite lock, and um, he was patient enough on the throttle to not large it too much, and it spit the MR2 across the track. So, he's still now within a chance of taking that class, um, class win again. OK, so here's one we prepared earlier. It's going to be a mirror image of what we had on the previous lap, isn't it? Here comes Jim Davis. Yes, he's got the speed, and he's going to make that move again, going up towards Quarry. He's on the outside line going into the corner, gets his nose in front. Now, can he cut across and take the place? Not quite. Runs out a little bit wide. Great clean racing between these two. Absolutely together. They're on the run now towards the S's. Jim Davis is on the outside line, not where he wants to be then. Can he move around the front? No, he can't cut across, can he? He was hung out to dry on the outside, so he slots back in behind. No time for a cheery wave this time because he wasn't really able to get properly up and past. He was only able to level on the way towards Quarry. And to be fair, now, of course, Stuart Nichols knows where Jim Davis is strong. He knows where he needs to defend. Yeah, we've got one minute and 15 seconds left of this race, so possibly another lap for these guys just to see if our man Davis can actually take that elusive glass win that he's been looking for today in this race. Leaders go through. Matthew Palmer upping his pace and has just done the best lap of the race to try to pull away from Ben Rowe. And there, going through, early spinner Mick Nichols. Trying to have a bit of a scrap now with Craig Hamilton, a man who works for the RAF, and who is just in car 31, staying ahead of him as they turn their way through quarry. Meantime, Jim Davis comes out of camp corner, still chasing after Stuart Nichols. The gap between those two, and this is for a class lead, remember, he's just two tenths of a second. Yeah, he's got a great run there, maybe ducked out of the toe a little bit too early, but you can see the speed that he carried through Camp Corner, then through Folly. We're now approaching Avon Rise now. He's not waving this time, is he? He's not going to make the same mistake. <laughs> down into fourth, down into third gear, and he's made it stick. Is he going to lose it on the exit? No, he's not, but there was a screeching of tyres there that I just heard through the, uh, the microphone there. So, great stuff from these guys, and he has got the move done. It's done, sorted. And the checkered flag's going to be out this time for Matthew Palmer. There in 87, the blue car look coming into Bobby's. He's in traffic. Now, if he's delayed, is that going to help Ben Rowe? Where is Ben? There he is behind him in the red car. They're getting closer to one another. Matthew Palmer tries to go up the inside of Mick Nichols there to put a lap on him. He's going to be OK, though, isn't he, to hang on up front. The checkered flag is being made ready. And so Matthew Palmer it is who's going to score a first win. Comes now out of camp corner. The checkered flag is waved. And so Matt Palmer it is who comes across the line victorious then. Ben Rowe, after a really lively race, comes through in second spot. And the man that led the first few laps 
George Robinson is going to come home for third and then for fourth and the win of class C will go the way of Jim Davis who started 10th on the grid was a long way back at one point but has driven a second half of that race absolutely superbly and he comes across the line then to finish fourth and to take a class win richly deserved I would suggest yeah absolutely brilliant and um, no curse of the camera car for this guy he absolutely reveled in that race did a really good job gave us a great spectator views from um, doing some really good overtaking moves some clean racing really good close racing from them so only a little incident between the leading pack that we saw earlier in the race i think there's definitely going to be words to, words to have with these guys but i really don't think that it was really anyone's fault he just did the move on the inside turned in slightly and just caught the rear wing i, I, I don't think it was an intentional at all as you were saying great driving and very clean from these guys by and large yes and of course you might argue it was a racing accident and you talk about people that have done relatively little racing so a beginner's error for people that are relative beginners in the sport matt palmer the winner ben row second the gap of the flag 1.3 seconds george robinson survives for third ahead of a class winning jim davis stuart nichols is fifth and malcolm edison comes home to round out the top six in his mark two Well, we've had some great racing so far today at Castle Coombe, and more to come as we now get ourselves towards the second round of races. Uh, just a question that's been posed on Twitter from Paul Hadsley. Why is Castle Coombe such a hidden gem on the British motorsport scene? Has a cult following, but no major championships visit. Well, it's a fair point. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, about a decade or so, it started with Formula 3 and GT coming here as the major meeting of Castle Coombe season. And in fact, if you look around, the chicanes put in partly to accommodate those cars. Extra debris fencing had to go up and a bit more change to runoff areas to accommodate F3 and GT. But one of the problems was the North of the cars that didn't go down a storm with local residents uh, and so uh, that plus the fact that Formula 3 drivers kind of prefer to go and race at Grand Prix venues more than at Castle Coombe rather uh, put pay to the championships coming back year after year but if you go back a long time go back to the 80s and the 90s really in the days before packages came around like you have the Toka package like you have a Formula 3 GT package some of those type of support series like for example Formula Ford or in the 80s production saloon car racing in the 90s manufacturer one make championships like uh, Rovers or TVRs for example uh, they would come here and headline race meetings on their own so one of the problems that Castle Coombe as a circuit has faced in recent years is a byproduct of these package race meetings springing up that uh, sucks lots of content into them and therefore you're left with lots of good quality club racing uh, but club racing nonetheless so uh, that kind of answers your question I hope as to why we don't get the type of racing here that other circuits do and indeed how things have changed over the years a bit of retrieval work to be done for one of the cars Mark Warren Layton I think the man from Arif whose car there is parked out on the circuit and a race win for Matt Palmer no doubt very happy let's find out he's with Jenny yes he is down here just uh, getting ready to celebrate congratulations a great win yes thank you very much I just like to say thank you to my granddad and uh, I should definitely be home revising for a test tomorrow but it's a much better way to spend my time I was going to say adrenaline normally helps you through tests definitely. bank holiday here how's it like out there because the weather's really tricky today isn't it uh, it was I didn't want to race earlier today but uh, it dried out nicely and ended up quite a nice day well congratulations on the win we're going to bring in uh, one of your co-competitors actually Patrick Morell uh, he's going to be uh, issuing you your um, wreath and your trophy congratulations director of the uh, 750 club uh, sport so you celebrate your win well done thank you 